Father, we thank you for all the blessings of this life. And Lord, we're returning a portion back to you now that you've asked us to. We dedicate it to you, Lord, and just ask you to use it for ongoing thy kingdom in this area. Bless the gift as well as the giver, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. excited just to be in here, Amen. just to worship the Lord and have a great time worshiping the only true and the living God. What a privilege that is that we have, that we can come in freedom and worship our Lord. And so let's have a great worshipful experience here this morning. You have your Bibles, turn with me over to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we'll be looking at verses 16, 17, and 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16, 17, and 18. Preaching on the subject of a triumphal entry into heaven. Think about that. A triumphal entry into heaven. Verse 16 says, notice it. For the Lord himself. I want you to pay close attention to that. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Probably the most familiar passage of Scripture referring to the rapture 
is in this passage of Scripture that I just read to you. Now the word rapture is not in the Bible. But as we read this passage of Scripture, where it says, We who are alive and remain shall be called up together in the clouds to meet Jesus in the air. Now those words, as you translate it into the English language, turns rapture. The words mean catching away. The words mean suddenly snatching away. So the basis of this passage of Scripture we refer to in that event is that when all the believers are called up, to meet Jesus in the air. Now notice that the passage says, meeting Jesus in the air. A lot of times preachers get it mixed up, and I used to get it mixed up until the Lord taught me different. Jesus at this time comes in the air and never sets foot upon the earth. This is the coming of Jesus calling the dead in Christ to rise first, and then those who will be walking around at that time will be called up to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We have a picture of the Lord Jesus coming to get His own, gathering His own together, all of His children, and taking us back to heaven. And when he gets to the gates of heaven with the redeemed, all of those who have accepted Christ as their personal Savior, he gets to the gates with all of the redeemed, the question might be asked this, who is the Lord of glory? And the answer will be given, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all these he has saved and has redeemed. So you see, friends, if you are a born-again child of God, you're going to be in this number. Now, if you don't hear anything else today, I want you to hear that. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, when this time comes, as Paul is writing here to the Thessalonians, and he was talking to them to give them comfort, and he was comforting them, those who know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, you're going to be in this group of people. If you're saved, you are a part of this great host of redeemed. I'm going to tell you, folks, there is going to be a triumphal entry into heaven one of these days. I don't know whether you get excited about that or not, but I do. I can almost picture that this morning uh, as we come and Jesus is there in the air and he says, come up hither. And you'll see, and I'll say more about this in a moment, you'll see the dead in Christ rising first and, and he'll take them up and he'll change them in the twinkling of an eye. And then all of those, it says, who are walking around, if it's us, we'll be walking around. He'll call us up and he'll change us in the twinkling of night to be in a body just like him. We'll be like him one of these days. A triumphal entry into heaven. Now here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, we have four promises in the word of God to us about the event when millions will disappear uh, from the earth. And the first thing the promise is, and notice this, the first promise is the promise of an e -e re-entry. A promise of an e re-entry. I'm going to get that right in just a moment. Re-entry. Look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. There is the promise. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And take, emphasis, take note, folks, the emphasis is on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see, one of these days when the last soul is going to be saved, uh, and the last soul is going to go be saved, and the body of Christ, the church, is going to be complete. Oh, I'm thinking about that. And what would it be if it was like it is here today and someone comes and accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Jesus says, that's the last one and all of a sudden he takes the dead in Christ. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. The dead in Christ rises him first. 
Boy, I tell you, you talk about shouting. Baptists are, are, don't shout as much as they used to be. We used to be known as shouting Baptists, but I tell you what, we saw Jesus in there. If you didn't shout, shout, there'd be something wrong with you. And I can almost imagine that the Father would look down at the Son and, and He would give the Son that no, a knowing nod and, and the Lord Himself shall be sin. Not an angel, not a substitute, not some other heavenly being, but the Lord God Himself, the Bible says, He shall be sin. You see, friends, Jesus is going to come for His own one of these days. He's coming for His children. No other joy that Jesus is going to have when He receives His own up to be with Him. Jesus is going to experience that for Himself so the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven, this first passage says there in verse 16. But also take note of certain sounds that are going to be attached to this return of Jesus. There is, first of all, going to be a shout. Second, there's going to be the voice of the archangel. And third, there's going to be the triumph of God. The Lord will descend with a shout, and the shout will summon the saints to glory. Think about that. Jesus is going to come one of these days. He's going to come with a shout, and that is calling us all home to heaven. That shout will wake up the redeemed dead. That shout will be under the announcement of the saints that we're going to go home. If that doesn't excite you, folks, something's wrong with you. Well, we're, I'm looking for that shout. I'm looking for Jesus to come. And I'm listening for that shout. And we'll see the dead in Christ rise first. And then we which are walking around will be gathered up. Oh, glory. What a glorious day that is going to be. Amen. The Lord will descend with a shout. And the shout will summon the saints to glory. Revelation chapter 4. I can almost imagine this may be what Jesus will shout. Come up hither. Come up here with me. Oh, how about that? Think about that. You hear the Lord Himself. Come up here with me. And I'm going to tell you what, folks. When that happens, you better get out of the way because I'm going to be running as hard as I can uh, to the Lord Jesus. And He says, come up hither. And when He does, God's children are going to be caught up. They're going to be suddenly snatched away. And then there's a second voice. That's the voice of the archangel. That voice uh, of the archangel is going to summon the angels uh, to war. You see, when millions disappear from the earth, Life is going to continue on. It's not going to stop when the, the church is uh, raptured out. The life is going to continue on on this earth. He is calling us home, and the battle will begin here upon this earth. The great tribulation is going to occur. So the voice of the archangel, uh, that voice is summoning the angels to war. And then it says, the trump of God. Now the trump of God has particular uh, application to Israel. It is, the, it is an application to remind Israel that God's going to deal with them again. But also that trump also has a special relevance uh, to the people of God because in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 15, uh, verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. You see, folks, I am not so much listening, looking for signs, but I am listening for sounds. It says the sounds are going uh, to happen. One of these days, friends, we're going to hear the voice of the Lord, and one of these days we're going to hear the voice of the archangel, and one of these days we're going to hear the trump of God, and then we as God's people, we are going to be called away together uh, with the Lord. Yes, folks, there's going to be a re-entry. Are you going to be part of it? And then second, there's the promise of a resurrection. Look at the last part of verse 16. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Who's going to be set for, raised first? The dead in Christ. One of these days when Jesus comes again, He's coming there, it comes in the air, and the shout is heard. Those who are dead are going to be raised up from the dead. And there are going to be uh, uh, some of you sitting here today. You may have a heavy heart. Not many days ago, you went out to a cemetery. Not many years ago, you went out to a cemetery. Uh, and it's fresh upon your mind even in heart even today. You carried the body of a loved one out to that graveyard. Somewhere out to a place where the grave had been dug. And there you took a precious mother. And you lowered her in, into that grave. Or maybe a loving husband. Or maybe a, a, a dear father. Or maybe a child of yours. 
and you have the heart-rending experience of turning and walking away from that grave and you look back and there was sorrow in your heart and tears in your eyes. Well, dear bereaving child of God, let me tell you one thing. One of these days is going to be a different story, a different picture out there in the graveyard. One of these days when Jesus Christ comes, there's going to be an awful commotion out there in the cemetery. Friends, I want you to know there's going to be some dirt flying everywhere. There's going to be some two toms cracking open. There's going to be some vaults cracking open and every born again believer in Jesus Christ who has been buried in those graveyards is going to be raised the dead in Christ shall be raised first of all. Amen. They are coming from everywhere. They're coming out of the depths of the sea, out of the oceans. They're coming out of the jungles where planes have crashed and, and where missionaries have died serving the Lord Jesus. Every child of God who has been buried in Christ will be raised one of these days. And millions, think about this, picture this, millions will be called up to meet the Lord in there. Yes, there's going to be a re-entry. Yes, there's going to be a resurrection. But thirdly, there's a promise of a rapture. Look at verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds. Now, that statement means that there will be a period of time in church history when there will be millions of believers who will go home not dying. Think about it. We might just be uh, that group of people. We'll never uh, face death. We'll never taste death. That's what the Bible is telling us uh, here in this passage of Scripture. There is a hymn that has a great message, and I want to read the words to you, listen to it. It may be at morn when the day is awakening, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. Now listen to another stanza. Oh joy, oh delight, should we go without dying? No sickness, no sadness, no dread, no crying. Caught up through these clouds with our Lord into glory when Jesus receive his own. Oh Lord, how long? How long ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, hallelujah, Christ returneth, amen. One of these days, folks, just exactly like that old hymn says, that is going uh, to happen. This is what the book said. It's going to happen. That those who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord uh, in the air. You see, folks, one of these days, every person up as alive upon this earth that has a, a, a corresponding nature, nature with the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be taken. The Son of God is going to come and catch the sons of God up. The light of the world is going to come and catch the lights up. Uh, the, 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 the Lamb of Lamb of God is going to come and, and take up the lambs of God. Now let me ask you something. Do you have that nature of Jesus? Have you been born again? Well, friends, if you do, I want to tell you, when Jesus comes, if he should come today or come tonight, you'll be caught up to the Lord in the air. Think about it. Can you just imagine what is going to happen when millions of God's born-again people leave this earth? Can you just imagine what is going to occur? Now, I know that you have seen the J.B. Hunt truck drive, trucks, transfer trucks on the interstates and the highways. J.B. Hunt is a deacon at First Baptist Church in Springdale, Arkansas. And he has 2,000 trucks in his, uh, in his fleet. And I, I would imagine most of those drivers, I would hope that all those drivers would be safe. But think about this, out there on the highways and interstates, these trucks are out on the road in one day, just an ordinary day, and Jesus Christ descends from heaven with a shout, and every born-again trucker in those trucks it will be suddenly taken away. Brother, you can go ahead and think about this. What about the traffic jam that you are going to see that's going to occur on earth? I mean, there are going to be trucks going everywhere. When Jesus says, come up hither, every born-again trucker is going to leave that truck and is going to go down and crash somewhere. You may not believe this, but this is what the Bible tells us. When Jesus Christ comes and all of us who are living, he'll take us up. And I'm going to tell you, if you're in a car, if you're in a truck, if you're at home, wherever you may be. You may even be in a grocery store. You won't need those groceries any longer because Jesus is going to call you home. Amen. Think about this. It's getting off time down in Memphis. 
Folks are on their way home from their job. And about that time, Jesus descends from heaven. And every born again person in those cars are going to be snatched up. Man, you tell, let me tell you something. Cars are going to be going everywhere. It's going to be chaos everywhere. But where are we going to be, folks? We're going to be going up to meet Jesus in the air. If you're lost here this morning, you're going to still be here. And you're going to go through what I'm talking about this morning because only the children of God will be raised up. When me has disappeared from this earth, the book says, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. A rapture is going to happen. Then, fourthly, is a promise of a reunion. Listen to this. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll be caught up together with them, and we'll always be with the Lord. Now, for 2,014 years, people have been expecting the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you this, 2014 years, we're closer than we've ever been before. I do not know when it's going to happen, but I'll tell you one thing. When it does happen, in a millisecond, in a millisecond, we'll find ourselves, children of God, face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you think about that. I've never seen Jesus. You've never seen Jesus. But I'll tell you, when this happens, in a millisecond, you're going to be right before Him, the Lord Jesus Christ. That excites me. I don't know about you. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Folks, that's going to be one of the most outstanding, the most amazing events that will ever happen on this earth when millions disappear. When Jesus says, come up hither. Well, let me close by saying this and leaving this with you. I don't know, but today may be the day. And it may be someone in this building today who will come to Christ. And the Lord will say, now listen to this. The Lord will say, that's the last one. That's the last one. I wonder, friends, if you would be that last one that Jesus is trying to reach today. I wonder if you are that one that the Lord wants to come, you come to Him to be saved today. Listen, when the last one is saved, Jesus will come, the rapture will happen, and the people who know Him will be, leave this place, and you will be left behind. <laughs> well, no hope, no chance, no second opportunity. You know, I believe in all my heart this morning that God sent you here to hear this message. I believe in all my heart you know that Jesus is reaching out to you this morning. I believe you, I know you know that He is calling for you this morning to come to Him. And we, we give the invitation in just a moment. You need to come and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity I've had to share this message that you have led us to. And Lord, we know the truth of your word that it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And all of those uh, family and friends and relatives, Lord, that we buried in the cemeteries in the past will be the first ones to come up out of those graves. Those who have been buried at sea will come up out of the sea in the oceans. Those missionaries who have died in the jungles and buried there will be coming up out of the grave because your word says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And Lord, if we would be the ones that... Uh, We'll be walking around when you come back. We know that when you make the shout, if that shout has come up hither, we know we'll be snatched up, we'll be gathered up, caught away, and changed into the twinkling, in a twinkling of an eye. And so we'll be with those who, the dead in Christ, who rose first and, and be with you, Lord, throughout eternity. And your word says, wherefore comfort one another with these words. What comfort that is to us, Lord, to know that when you do come, if we're dead or if we're alive, we're going to be gathered up and changed to be just like you. Holy Spirit, God, move in this congregation this morning. Speak to that one lost person or that two lost people or that three or how many is here today. I hope that they have listened to this message and they know that they must know Jesus Christ 
to be raptured out of this world. If not, they'll be left for the great tribulation is going to come. And I can't describe that tribulation because, Lord, if I wouldn't uh, get anywhere close to it if I tried to describe it. It's going to be an awful time. One like this earth I've never seen before. And, Lord, we don't want to be here of that. Holy Spirit, convict that lost person and point them to Christ. And we'll praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.